Welcome to Papster at your place. Um, if you're here with us last week, welcome back. If you're here for the first time, we are so, so excited to see you and um, we can't wait to spend the morning with you. <sighs> what a crazy week it's been. Um, you know, last week we tried this for the first time and it was all new. And then this week um, it's all looking new and different again. And, um, you know, if you are in New Zealand, you would have been in isolation for a few days now and I don't know if you're getting cabin fever already like me <laughs> um, but yeah it's just just a crazy time and so um, yeah it's really awesome that we still get to connect in this way and it is going to look a little bit different this week but we're just going to try our best to bring you what we can and of course still connect and check in with you all so today we've got an awesome program lined up for you. We have Epic Time again with Pastor Fee. And so if your kids aren't up yet, make sure they're up, wake them up, get them to come um, and get a front row seat in front of whatever screen you're watching on today. Um, she's got an awesome word just for them. So make sure your kids are ready for Epic Time that's coming up really soon. We also have praise and worship today. Now, our awesome worship team actually um, got together after um, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern made the call, um, and we really quickly got together and um, were able to record some music that we're going to be able to spread out over the time that we're all um, staying at home. So we have some music to share with you today, and um, so yeah, really grateful to our team for pulling that together in the end. Um, we have an interview with Sarah Ryan, and Sarah is an awesome papster, um, papster gal, she's part of our papster family, and she has an amazing story. Um, she actually just made it back into the country after being in Cambodia for a few weeks, and so I'm really looking forward to hearing her story today. And of course, we have a message from our awesome pastor, Will, who's gonna be bringing the word. So make sure you invite your friends, make sure you let them know that papster at your place is starting, streaming right now um, and to get on that link um, and you know one of the things that went off really really well last week something that people loved was our interview with the Dr. Warwick and so right now we're gonna have an update from Karen and Dr. Warwick and we're just gonna ask him you know what's going on now what are things that we need to know and um, yeah so I'm gonna hand it over to them let's see what he's got to say Hey Warwick, thanks for joining us again this week. We're really grateful um, to hear from you again. I sit here again feeling like it's incredibly hard to believe, hey, last week we were sitting at a level two and now today we sit at a level four in our nation. Talk to us about important things that we need to remember about sticking to level four guidelines. Talk to us about the importance of, of, of doing this together. Mm -hmm. Master Karen. Yeah, this is a big week um, and every week recently has been a big week, but this has been a particularly big week, really um, life-changing for everyone, not only in New Zealand, but around the world. So um, we're all in this together, as you say. I think the sticking to level four is incredibly important. I mean, New Zealand has acted early um, earlier than other nations in the same position and that's been um, done in order for us to try and get ahead of the curve. We spoke about that last week. We want to act ahead of this potential um, tsunami of cases. Um, so we've gone early, which I think is entirely the right thing to do. And now each of us has our part to play in doing that. And, and, and the main message is stay at home to save a life. Um, uh, that's really as, as bottom line as it gets. Um, and uh, the Prime Minister has spoken about being in your bubble and that's people, people that you are isolating with in your home. So that's the bubble in which you should stay and maintain you in, and are required to under the directives um, issued by the government. And, and this is not for fun or um, because someone's, you know, trying to harm us. This is really all to try and help us because the more we can contain movement, the less the chance is for COVID-19, the disease, to spread. So I think this is incredibly important. And I think the other message that we talked about last week, which I want to reiterate, is that we need to act as if we have the virus, um, not as though we're going to get it. 
Mm. Yeah, and we've heard that a lot from Jacinda as well, hey, that's the communication that they're saying. So Warwick, I've heard it said by some other Christians that we should be continuing to gather, that we're actually demonstrating a lack of faith by not gathering because God will continue to protect us. How would you respond to that? Yeah, Karen, I've uh, also heard some of those messages and I think that's deeply concerning. Um, I think there's clear history through, uh, clear evidence through history that um, just believing in God doesn't mean that you're guaranteed of uh, being safe. Um, God's no genie in a bottle that we rub and suddenly have a protective coat around ourselves. Um, so um, I think that we need to consider that uh, self-isolation is probably the most generous thing thing we can do right now at the moment. Um, this is a very serious viral illness that is taking many people's lives. And if we are going to save lives as Christians, then what we need to do is adhere to the level four uh, self-isolation guidelines. Um, you know, many Christians argue for pro-life and are anti-euthanasia. Well, here's an opportunity to really save lives by staying at home and um, keeping at home because staying at home will save a life. Wow, awesome. I've also heard all sorts of other interesting myths, shall we say, and misconceptions that are going around about COVID-19 and about how to prevent it. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? So again, Karen, as we talked about last week, there is no cure for COVID-19, um, but there is, of course, supportive treatment if that's needed. Most people are going to have a mild illness and get better on their own. But the myths that are, are harmful, so drinking water to keep your mouth wet the whole time, making sure that it's only warm, holding your breath, taking vitamins, all of this is absolute nonsense um, and will make no difference to anyone whatsoever. So. Um, uh, we need to stick to the authoritative um, Ministry of Health guidelines. The things that will help us, number one, is to self-isolate. Number two is to wash our hands and wash them well. Um, if we have coughed, use good cough etiquette. Um, if you get sick, uh, with someone gets sick in their home, they need to further isolate themselves to one room. Um, so these are the things that we can do that actually make a difference and are proven to make a difference. And let's not add to conspiracy theories um, and nonsense therapies that give false hope. Awesome. And I guess lastly, Warwick, if we do level four well as a nation, will this stop COVID from spreading? I think there's clear evidence uh, that we've seen from around the world that strict uh, level four following of guidelines will slow the progress of this pandemic. Um, we've seen now that in China, they are, are re relaxing um, the uh, strict laws that have been put in place there, even in the epicenter of where this has occurred. Um, so we know that it can be done. If every single one of us does our part and takes it really seriously, we will definitely make a difference. The only reason to leave your home is if you need food, or if you need medical attention. Otherwise, please stay at home to save a life. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Warwick. Appreciate your time. We're going to be speaking to Warwick each week um, and just um, getting the opportunity to stay that little bit more informed about this virus. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Warwick, for being with us. Um, and join us again next week to find out more. Thanks. Katetiano. Wow, thank you so much Warwick and Karen for that um, awesome update on everything that's going on with COVID-19 and, and self-isolating at home. Um, again, such a crazy time, but um, it's great to really hear great information and um, I hope that you all really enjoyed that again. So just a few things um, to our Papster family and for anyone that's watching in online, um, just a couple things we'd love to, to let you know about. We want to know um, if, if you're in need of some help. You know, um, with us being on, on lockdown right now, we understand that there are some people that things um, like getting food um, or medication and things like that are proving to be really, really hard. And so if that's you, if you're somebody that, um, yeah, would, would appreciate somebody maybe going in and picking something up for you, dropping it at your door, um, 
if that's you, we would love to help you. So please um, get in touch with us either by email or by the number that you see down below and we'd just love to get in touch with you and, and ask you how we can help. And on the flip side of that, if you are somebody that um, can help, if you're someone that, that feels comfortable enough um, to say, you know what, I can put my hand up and I can go um, and pick up some things from the grocery store or a pharmacy or anything like that, we would love to hear from you as well because we are looking for people People like you so if that's you and you think you um, you'd be able to serve some people that maybe are a bit more vulnerable and um, would love to hear from you as well so please get in touch with us too we are in lockdown right now and so unfortunately our office is closed but if you would still like to give we do have online giving options set up so you can give by direct bank transfer and the account number is just below here or you can give um, by the push pay app and just search PAPSA and then follow the instructions from there. So if you'd like to give, please use those online banking options. Right now, we are going to hear from some of our PAPSA peeps. And we're just going to hear about how they're, they're coping with the whole situation with um, COVID-19 and the effects of it. So let's watch that now. Good morning, PAPSA. It is so good to see you this morning. Hasn't so much changed in the last week, the last few days, you know, who would have thought a week or so or two that we wouldn't be able to meet uh, together at Papster in our, in our building like we normally do for a worship service or that we wouldn't be able to catch up with friends or even buy pasta off the shelves at the supermarket. So we thought right now it might be fun to catch up with some Papster people and to just hear what they're doing, how they're choosing to respond and how they're choosing to, to make a difference in their world right now. Hi Gloria, how are you doing? Hi Leanne, I'm, I'm okay. Who's at home with you in your bubble? Um, I've got my family at home, that's Hine, um, and my son Eugene and daughter Nelise. You're the principal at the um, Adventist High School here in Auckland. What, what was kind of the feeling there as you wrapped up school this week and we went into lockdown? First of all, I think the kids were quite excited. You know, they thought, oh yes, the holidays had come, but um, I think when everything sort of settled, uh, there was a mixture of, um, you know, just the uncertainty, a little bit of fear, a little bit of, you know, what does this look like for us? Yeah, I think it really is around the uncertainty of what the next couple of weeks is going to look like. As a teacher, as an educator, have you got any advice for people who are now at home with their kids for four weeks? Yeah, I think the, the first thing is to just be positive and stay calm. Kids get their cue off us. Um, and if we are stressing and if we are worried about things, they'll tend to pick that up. So, you know, we're going to be living in close quarters for the next couple of weeks. And I think it's really important that we keep those stress levels down. And that'll be the first thing I would say. Um, the second thing, so I think it's really important to get into a routine. Um, you know, establish that in your home and uh, so that the students will have time to, to get their work done. Um, the third thing is, uh, you know, learn with your child as they're doing schoolwork. Uh, teachers are all online. We've been preparing for this. Email your email the, your child's teacher or your child can email their teacher and have the conversations. We're pretty much set up to, to have those conversations. And I guess the last thing I would say, you know, just try to approach this time as an adventure. Uh, I think we have to trust in our, our leaders, our government leaders and, and the decisions they've made. And also, um, you know, just know that regardless of what's happening around us, God's still in control. And yeah, I think that's, that's what I'd say to people. I love that. Approach this as an adventure. Thank you, Gloria. Love to you and your family. Bye. Hi, stay safe. Hi, Victor. Great to see you. Yeah. Now, you guys have been traveling. You've been overseas. Tell us about that. We plan to have a little bit of a holiday in the US, uh, but I had to uh, call it off. We just returned back on Monday morning, uh, back to New Zealand. So good to be home. So tell us, what have you been doing since you got back? What are you working on? Uh, although we will be and we are disconnected now um, by distance, mm -hmm. uh, we can still be connected through uh, social media and support each other. So um, we thought that uh, to, to fill the void and also uh, support each other through uh, social media would be a great way to start a Facebook group 
of positive people who uh, want to reach out to each other, uh, challenge each other, um, have interaction going, um, have daily challenges, um, share some of the experiences of what were they up to during the four weeks. And uh, so we set up a group that is called Stronger Together NZ. And it is really about um, uh, connecting people uh, to stay, to you know, those who want to stay uh, positive yeah. and who, um, who care for each other and want to support each other. Love it. So anybody can join, anybody can be a part of this. And it's, it's an open, correct, it's an open group. Anybody can, can join in. Thank you, Victor. Thank you for working on that. That's an awesome thing. I think that's, yes, that's yes. fantastic. Thank you. Maybe we'll get some updates from you um, in future weeks. Absolutely. And uh, there's also a gift. Uh, if anyone have heard of a Live More project, yes. it's gen uh, generally the fee is 75 Australian dollars. Now for 10 weeks, it is free. So anyone who joins the group yes. gets free uh, pass uh, to that, um, to that uh, Live uh, More project. And it also kind of takes that whole experience to another level. Oh, well, that's nice to get something for free, $75 worth for free. And it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun and a great way to connect over the next four weeks. <laughs> Hi, Kristen. Who are you spending the next four weeks with? Hi, I'm spending the next four weeks with my husband, my mom, and my new pet fish. You are a speech therapist working at Auckland Hospital. So how is this um, COVID-19 crisis impacting you and your work? So far, it's all still um, being changed um, often, but I'm doing a little bit of work from home when I can and then going into the hospital to support um, some of the other speech therapy teams when I can as well. So it's a little bit of both. What kind of work are you doing as a speech therapist at the moment? I specialise um, working with people that have mouth and throat cancer and voice disorders. So voice, swallow, speech, yeah. So pretty important even right now. I've heard that you might need to work in some different areas in the hospital at the moment. Um, tell us about that. We're clinical staff anyway, so we can use our skills to help support some of the other areas like physios or nursing, um, just to jump on board where we can to provide extra support. Hopefully we don't need you to do that, Kristen, but I know you do a fantastic job. Yeah. What's your message as a health professional to those of us who are at home? Um, if you're not essential work, you stay at home and do your part and then um, just be kind to each other and the pe those of us that are working in the hospital. Um, I think everyone's just trying to do their best. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you for talking to us today and um, all the best and thank you for being a health professional who's looking up. Bye. Even while there's a lot of crazy things happening, there is still a lot of things that we can do and a lot of things that we can choose, choose. And one of those is our attitude and another one is how we choose to respond in this situation. Wow, I love listening to that and just seeing, you know, that people are feeling the same way as me and I'm sure you could relate to some of those videos you've just heard. And um, yeah, we're all in this together and it's so great to be reminded of that. Well, perhaps at your place, our, our service is about to start. So make sure you're comfortable. Make sure um, you've got your breakfast um, or your coffee if you need it. Um, get a comfy seat and we're about to start in just a couple of minutes. You still have a, a, a minute or so to invite a friend. The link is right there down below. Make sure they know what is going on right here um, at Paps or at your place. They do not want to miss out. So make sure you go and tell all your family, all your friends, Perhaps that your place is happening right now.
Welcome to Epic Time. My name is V, and today I'm coming to you from inside my home where my children and I have built a fort. That's right, we've made use of our time in isolation so far. Now you can have fun at home, you just got to be creative. Okay, before we get started with our Epic Time this morning, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for loving us and protecting us and being with us as our world goes through a difficult time. We pray that you will help us to do the right thing to keep each other safe, to be wise, kind, and mindful of one another. We think of those families who are going through a time of grief, loss, or sickness, and we pray that you will be with them, that you will comfort them and meet them in their need. We pray that you will help us to understand your message for us today. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. 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 As you may be aware, the coronavirus or COVID-19 outbreak is very serious. It's a real concern, and a lot of people are getting sick because of it. To further protect the country and spreading of COVID-19, the government has placed New Zealand under lockdown. That's right, the entire country is in isolation. Which brings me to my next question. How has isolation been going for you lately? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, stop, stop, let me stop you there. To help you and your families have fun and stay connected, I have awesome resources. Now, all you need to do is get your parents or guardians to email me at this email address or go onto our Facebook page at Papster Epic and you will find all you need to know and how to keep yourselves occupied during this time. Okay, perhaps you're feeling like this whole coronavirus thing happened so fast now we're in lockdown and you don't even understand what COVID-19 is okay here to help me do that for you is Dr. Michelle Dickinson otherwise known as Nano Girl let's take a look you may have heard people talking about coronavirus or COVID-19 and you might be wondering what on earth is it so viruses are really tiny particles. They're so tiny we can't see them, so they're invisible to us. But viruses can actually make us sick. So a virus is basically, if you looked at it under a microscope, it looks like a ball with these dangly bits on there. And each of these dangly bits are designed to attach to different parts of our body, depending on which virus it is. You may have heard that some people took a day or a week off school because they had something called the common cold. Now the common cold can be caused by a type of coronavirus and its dangly bits attach to cells in your nose like this and they give you a stuffy nose and they make you feel really, really sick. Usually you can rest for a while and then feel better. The coronavirus or COVID-19 that people are talking about, it has dangly bits that stick to our lungs and our lungs help us breathe. And so people who get this type of coronavirus, they have a shortness of breath and they struggle to breathe as well as feeling very, very ill. So what happens if you get coronavirus? Well, interestingly, it seems that young people and children, they have a natural immune system that seems to be able to fight the virus and they don't get very sick. So far, nobody with coronavirus who is under the age of 15 has actually had very severe symptoms. 
Although sadly, grandparents and older people, they can get very sick with this virus and they're not able to fight it very well, which is why we need to be on a mission to stop the coronavirus from spreading. The good news is that viruses don't have legs, so they can't walk to us, and they don't have wings, so they can't fly to us. This means to get to our lungs, they're going to need our help. So our mission is to stop helping the coronavirus and stop it from spreading. So let's imagine we have some coronavirus on this drink bottle. Now, we probably don't, but what I've put is a little bit of pretend virus on there that's going to glow in the dark. To see this, we're going to need to turn out the lights. You should be able to see with the UV light that actually this pretend virus is growing here. Now, you won't be able to see this normally in normal light, but let's say I go and grab the drinks bottle. My hand is currently clean. If I do it, the virus is going to transfer to my hand, and now you can see that the virus is stuck on my fingers. All right, I'm just going to turn the lights back on. But even if the virus is stuck to your hands, you don't have to panic. It can't go anywhere from here. It can't get into your skin. All it wants to do, though, is get into your lungs. So this is why we always tell you to wash your hands often, especially before you eat anything, such as your lunch. The reason being is the way that the virus is going to get from your hand to your lungs is if you touch your mouth, your nose, or your eyes. So rubbing your eyes if they're itchy, picking your nose for snot balls, or putting your hands in your mouth without actually washing them. This is how the virus gets into us, and this is how we get infected. So washing your hands is really important to stop the spread of this little guy, our coronavirus. The other way a virus can get to you is if somebody who has the virus sneezes on you. Ugh. What happens is their snot carries the virus into your face, which is disgusting. So don't let people sneeze around you. It's gross. You might see people wearing masks right now, and that's designed, if you're sneezing, to keep the snot inside the mask and not over everybody. If you are going to sneeze and you don't have something to cover your face, do this. Sneeze into your elbow. Achoo! Don't sneeze into your hands, because then when anything you touch is going to be covered in horrible viruses and all sorts of nasty, so we don't want that. So there you go, that's what coronavirus is, and that's how we can stop the spread of this guy by keeping our hands nice and clean to keep everybody safe. Thank you so much, Nano Girl, for that awesome explanation. Hopefully that has given you a good understanding of what COVID-19 is and also helps you realize the importance of all of us abiding by the rules that the government has put in place to help prevent the spread of this virus. Now, more importantly, may we remember that God is with us and no matter how difficult the situation gets, God will see us through. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Our story today is taken from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. It starts off in a little city full of people. And in this city lived a man named Matthew. What was his name? Matthew! Very good. Matthew was a tax collector. Tax collectors would go around collecting money from the people of the town. But the problem was, tax collectors would often take more than they should, and they were not very liked. In fact, not a lot of people wanted to be friends with Matthew. One day, someone super important came to town. Can you guess who that was? Jesus! Very good. Jesus came to town. And who do you think Jesus went to talk to? Matthew! Matthew. Jesus went and said to Matthew, Come and follow me. Can you imagine what all the other people thought? They looked so confused. Can I see your confused face? They were wondering why someone so important and special as Jesus would go and talk to someone like Matthew. But see, Jesus invites us all to follow him. Jesus invites us all to be his friend. Later that evening, Jesus went and had dinner at Matthew's house. And who do you think Jesus invited? Everyone! Everyone! Jesus said that he came to save everyone so that everyone could follow him. So, who can follow Jesus? I can 
follow Jesus. We all can follow Jesus. Okay, I want you to imagine that these cards represent us. This is how Jesus sees us. Jesus calls us his children. With these cards, which you will probably use in isolation, I'm going to demonstrate how no matter what happens in life and how life turns out, Jesus sees us as his children and he is calling us to follow him. Assistant one, can I have your hand please? Thank you. Okay. I have the remaining deck of cards here. Now to show you that there is nothing to hide and no queens, I'm gonna flick through them just so that you can see. Da, 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 da. Now let's imagine that this deck of cards represent life. And here we are. Now sometimes life gets hard and we lose our way. Or sometimes things happen to us and it tends to change who we think we are. Or sometimes we just make the wrong decisions and we get disconnected. Sometimes we do things that are hurtful to others and also end up being hurtful to ourselves. But Jesus sees us. He looks at our life and he says, no matter what you've done, who you think you are or how others see you, you are my child. Jesus is still calling us to follow him no matter what. No matter what happens in life, Jesus calls us his children and is inviting us to follow him. And that wraps up our epic time today. Thank you so much for joining me again. Let's close off by praying. Dear God, thank you so much for the message today. Help us to remember that no matter what, we can follow you. Help us to think about what that looks like. We pray that you will be with the families who are struggling with sickness or grief or a time of loss, that you will comfort them. We pray that you will look after us during this time of isolation. Help us to find creative ways to have fun and stay connected. We pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you again, same time, same place, next week. We are really, really excited today to have the very awesome Sarah Ryan with us. Sarah has grown up at Papster um, and is one of my beautiful nieces. Um, but Sarah um, has got, I guess, a bit of news to share with us and we were excited to be able to update you with all of that. So I'm just going to ask Sarah some questions and um, let's get let's get to it Sarah. So in the middle of last year you um, graduated from the Auckland, uh, University of Auckland um, with a double degree. Tell us about that. What did you graduate with? And so I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and a Bachelor of um, Commerce in Marketing and Management. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so that sounds very cool <laughs> um, and very intense. It sounds very broad, Sarah. So you at the moment work for ADRA New Zealand. With that degree, I guess you could have chosen several different fields, um, lots of different job options. Why have you chosen to work for ADRA? Well, actually, when I when I started studying, I originally um, wanted to be a journalist. I was really interested in, in telling stories, and it's something I wanted to to travel with and, and see the world through through yeah. um, journalism work. And then while I was studying, I actually found that I really loved the marketing side of things and um, saw how people's brain worked in, in, an, in an economic sense. And um, that really appealed to me. So while I was studying um, marketing, my older brother Stephen was actually working for ADRA. And um, he told me that they had an internship role. Um, I was still in my first year of yeah. university. But um, at the time, I had uh, just... Um, just being made redundant at my frozen yogurt store. <laughs> so, um, so I decided to, to just apply and give it a go. Oh. And um, I got the job. Wow. And that, 
that was a blessing in itself. Um, so that was in 2014. Yes. 2015, sorry. Okay. So five years ago, I started there as um, an intern and initially I saw it as a way to um, just get experience and grow a bit. But over the years, I've started to realize um, how much I really love the organization mm -hmm. and um, what they do. And I really see it um, as like a life career now um, in that field of work of, of humanitarian non nonprofit marketing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's very cool. That's great. You know, it's, I love how it wasn't really the plan, um, but it just sort of happened, um, I guess, mm -hmm. up into your lap. So it's one thing to work for ADRA in New Zealand, Sarah, but this year you chose to head to Cambodia to work with ADRA there. And I guess that is super exciting and special for us at Papster because for the last seven years, actually since 2014, um, we, Papster, through our Papster on a Mission ministry, have been working alongside ADRA and a little village in Cambodia. So tell us about why you chose to go to Cambodia and tell us about your experience there. So um, I really, since starting to work with Adra, I really wanted to visit um, where Adra is working internationally. Mm. So in case you didn't know, Adra does work here in New Zealand. But those projects look a lot different to um, international development projects in um, more developing countries and that's I, I really wanted to experience that firsthand and see what life was like and be able to write stories and, and share them and um, this year uh, yeah I was given an opportunity to do that to work alongside the Adri Cambodia office wow. um, for four months wow um, that was initially the plan and yeah I just jumped at the opportunity um, yeah, to go to Cambodia, Edge New Zealand right now does have a five-year project um, working in Cambodia, and so there was that connection as well, which helped, yeah. So what was it like there? Did you manage to actually make it to our little village in Cambodia? What did you do for your time there? Yes, I did. Um, Cambodia is, is an amazing country. Um, it has uh, such, such a sad um, recent history, and through that you see such resilient people um, um such amazing friendly people as well incredibly welcoming um and yeah just uh, it, it's a beautiful country very different to new zealand as is any um developing country yeah. i guess and i did get to visit um perhaps to projects wow. i spent two days um in the field the plan was to spend quite a few um days more in the field but unfortunately i wasn't able to do that on this trip yeah. but um when i went to the papster village i had never been to cambodia or any of um the papster cambodia sites before and i was um i was really really taken aback by the impact that one church has made wow like uh, i remember just just driving into um the village where where papster serves and just being amazed um, by how many houses had latrines, thanks to Adra, thanks to Adra and thanks to Papster. Oh, wow. Like almost every house or every second house mm -hmm. just had these um, latrines, and, and it's cool because each of them have a little brand of, of Adra and Papster, so you can identify which ones are made, and, and you're just driving house by house, um, and they all have this. And for so many people, a, a latrine is really life-changing and to see the impact of, of one church and the communities um, where these latrines are, are built they really are um, the poorest and most vulnerable communities throughout Cambodia um, there's a system um, that uh, I guess the government places families into based on their income so there's like ID poor one and that's um, about the, the poorest i guess um almost vulnerable most um limited to, to resources um in that group and these communities where perhaps it serves is lots of people that that live inside that category wow. and um yeah it's, it's it's amazing to see the impact that um Papster has um and there's actually um if you don't mind me sharing i did get to interview 
two people that have been impacted by by latrines yeah. if, if you don't mind me sharing a little bit about those yeah. so the first family i visited um it's a family of five and their son was about six um, they didn't have a latrine and he um, contacted um, typhoid yes. um what what they would have to do is if they need to relieve themselves they would need to go into the field um, they didn't have access to proper hygiene facilities weren't able to wash their hands with clean running water um, which made them vulnerable to be sick and when this boy had typhoid it meant he missed out on school he wouldn't be able to go out and play with his friends um, his family they earned 45 dollars a month um, that's a dollar 50 a day for a family of five um, us dollars and so they couldn't afford um, to send him to a doctor. Um, instead, they sent him to a local health clinic um, and he got given paracetamol for typhoid. And um, yeah, so being able to, to afford a latrine, to be helped and supported by Patsta, you know, it's just life changing for this boy and um, for his family. And he's, he's not um, fully recovered. He is still sick. He is still um, quite vulnerable to diseases. But um, just the, the chance of having these diseases is much less likely. And he is now well enough to return to school, um, which is amazing. And the other um, woman that I met, um, she was sharing with me that uh, I guess the land that she lives on, is, it's very flat. Um, there's not hills or bunches of trees. Um, and her neighbors are quite nearby. And she said um, she would wait all day to, to relieve herself because she just had no privacy. So to protect the dignity that she had, she would just wait until it was dark. So it, just imagine having to live like that. And I think, you know, the difference between her and me, you know, we're just worlds removed, really. And so to think that, um, you know, perhaps just doing something, you know, we, we might think, oh, it's, it's just a little dream, but for this woman, it's it changes her life. It, it, and, and she also has a a fresh water tap and can get clean water. She doesn't have to walk up the roads to buy water. Um, it's just it's just amazing. And um, yeah, I just, I really want to thank Papster for, for the work that they're doing. It just, it really did blow my mind. And I did get to see um, other projects and they're doing amazing things too. But for me, Papster was just really close to home. And yeah, just, just well done um, perhaps to anyone that's been to Cambodia um, that's helped um, work anyone that's donated to these projects. Um, it's just, it's really is amazing and it really is life changing. Um, the difference that you're making, I just want to share that from someone who's who's going to see this change um, firsthand. Yeah, just absolutely blown away. That's yeah. awesome. That's so cool that you got to capture those stories, hey? And mm -hmm. and it puts so much more meaning around it for all of us um, who have been mm -hmm. part of that journey. So that's cool, Sarah. Um, I guess the really sad thing is that your trip got cut short. Like you said, you know, you were supposed to be there for four months, um, but because of COVID-19, you had to come back in case you didn't get back at all. Um, it was really the cold mm -hmm. hard reality. Um, so you've been in isolation for the last week. Um, you have been in isolation for a week before the rest of us have had to be in isolation. What has that been like? Um, I did spend the first few days sleeping, not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> uh, I have had my family home that um, have had to just be super vigilant about, about um, sanitizing everything, just being careful. Um, the, the thing for me is I, I would hate, if I did have it, um, I would hate to be responsible mm. of passing that on to someone else. And there is no way of knowing um, for any traveler for a period of time. Mm. And because of that, um, I've just had to be careful and really consider, um, especially my family, my dad, that he still goes to work because um, he's considered an essential service. And um, yeah, just, just being careful, being mindful of of everyone else um yeah and, and their access to to resources access to health um what they're able to do yeah just yeah yeah, 
<laughs> good on you, good on you, Sarah, for playing your part. I think that's a big deal, and that's what we've been saying here at Papster is this is not about us necessarily. It's about everyone, hey, and it's about protecting our community and keeping everyone safe. So um, we have all joined you now. Um, we are all Welcome. largely in here. Yeah, we're all largely now in isolation. So, um, but I love that we get to connect in ways like this. And so, Sarah, mm -hmm. thank you for talking with us um, this morning. Thanks for sharing a little bit about your journey in Cambodia um, and we're so glad to have you back we're so glad that um, you're safe and um, yeah we're just grateful um, to hear a bit about your story so thank you um, thank you so much um, for listening and giving me um, the opportunity to share It's all around us. Think about it. Faith. It's, it's everything. As inescapable as it is essential, it's how we live. It's what we build with. Our choices, our actions, all because of who we choose to believe. It's how we see the universe, others and ourselves, our today and tomorrow. When you look at canyons carved out by something as simple and subtle as a flow of water, Faith moves across the landscape, slicing passages through the seemingly immovable. For each of us, faith forges a path through the impossible and brings the intangible to life. I kind of think it's the spark, this faith, even in its simplest form, this small and yet certain belief within us that sets motion to miracles. It all starts here. Pepsa Church, welcome to Pepsa at your place. You know, this morning streaming in, we've got friends and family from around New Zealand and abroad. And I just want to say a special thank you and a welcome and uh, say, hey, it's awesome to have you guys with us. We're glad that you've joined us this morning. You know, we're all experiencing a time in Earth's history that is unprecedented. You know, New Zealand and a lot of other countries are experiencing lockdown because of COVID-19. And so in this time, it's so important for you and I to stay connected. And we're fortunate to have the, the technology that we do have today that enables us to do this. So I just want to challenge you, encourage you, do everything you can in this time to keep connected. You know, we've heard this phrase, social distancing, but let's not turn that into social isolation. Do everything you can. There's a Zoom. I have heard there's Zoom happening. Uh, there's a Facebook, Messenger, whatever it is. Do what you need to do to stay connected. You know, as I think of how much life has changed in the last couple of days for all of us, one word seems to emerge over and over and over again. Do you know what that word is? The word is faith. Faith. Now, as I said, faith, I'm sure some reaction, some response, some emotion was brought up within you. For some of you, it was a positive reaction, but for others, it may have been a negative one. You know, I don't know if you've heard people on social media talk about faith or you've had conversations with people around everything that's been happening, but what I've heard, you know, the tone around the word faith that I've heard goes something like this. Just have faith. You need to have more faith. Stop buying toilet paper. Just have faith. Uh, if you're scared, if you're afraid, it's because you don't have faith. Or maybe you've heard this one before. If you have faith, God's going to protect you from coronavirus. Have you heard some of these things before? Maybe you are someone who believes or has said some of these things. And the question this morning is, is this true? Is this really how we are supposed to react with faith? Is this what faith is? In order to avoid all the confusion this morning, I want to redefine for us what faith is. And when I say the word faith, I'm really referring to the word or the idea of confidence. Confidence. You know, in a situation such as the one that we are facing currently, 
It's no surprise that many of us are lacking confidence. Have you ever wanted more confidence? Have you ever wished that you had more confidence? You know, confidence is interesting because in one area of your life, you could be so confident, super confident in yourself and in your ability. But then you step into another area of your life and it feels like all your confidence disappears. Has confidence ever felt elusive for you? Have you ever wished, man, if only I can just have access to confidence? You know, I think it's so important for us friends and family this morning to get our confidence back. And it all starts with us understanding that confidence is not a feeling, but rather confidence is an action. You may not know this about me, but as a kid growing up, one of my biggest fears was public speaking. Yep, I'm not even joking. I hated speeches with a passion. I got away with it in primary school and in intermediate. But I remember when I got into high school, uh, in English class, the first week, our teacher said that what our first assignment was to write and say a three-minute speech. And I just remember being so scared. The day of my speech, I remember feeling sick. I remember feeling lightheaded. As I was in front of my class giving my speech, my body was shaking, my voice was shaking, I was sweating everywhere. Um, you know, it was not a good time. But funnily, funnily enough, you know, I find myself in a, in a season of my life where I'm, I'm speaking on a regular basis. You know, before the lockdown, I was speaking at least once a week in front of people. Uh, and so, you know, it's something that I do, I repeat, it's an action uh, that I keep on doing. And no matter how many times I do it, if I'm being honest with you guys, I still get scared. I still get nervous. My voice might not be as cracky. Uh, my heart might not be racing as fast. Unfortunately, I still do sweat, but uh, I'm more confident now than I was before. How is this possible? Well, it's possible because of action, because I kept doing it. Did you know that the more we repeat something, the more our confidence grows. You know, we can't get confidence by relying on our feelings. It's based on action. And the more we repeat those actions, the more our confidence grows. But hear me out. Confidence does not remove fear, but rather confidence or faith acts in spite of our fear. It's okay to be afraid but we mustn't allow our reaction to become dictated by our feelings. We must allow our reaction to become dictated by our confidence. You know, many of us in this situation right now are feeling afraid. We're afraid of losing our jobs. Some of us are, are fearful about how we're going to provide for our family during this time. Some of us are feeling afraid for our family members who are at risk, who are vulnerable, Faith doesn't mean that we can't be fearful, but it does mean that we act not based on our feelings, but based on our conviction, based on our faith, based on our confidence. The question this morning is how can you and I become more confident to have more faith? Have you heard of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? If there's ever a story of confidence, it's a story of these three young men. If you want to read the full story, it's found in Daniel chapter 3. But this morning, I'm just going to give a little bit of a summary. There's a guy by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, and he builds for himself a golden statue. And he one day gets all his officials, all his high-profile people to come and bow and worship this golden statue. Long story short, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to bow down because of their obedience to God. And of course, King Nebuchadnezzar, he hears word of this. He gets these three young men to come before him. He's angry, and he says, who do you think you are? How dare you refuse to bow down to my golden statue? And then he threatens their life. He says, if you don't bow down, I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace. You guys are going to burn to death. And what's amazing is the response that these three young men had to King Nebuchadnezzar. 
This is what they say in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. If there's ever a story of confidence in the midst of hardship, this is the story. They were given an ultimatum. It was a life or death situation. Bow or die. And what's crazy is their reaction, their response to the situation is confidence. Their confidence was twofold. Firstly, their confidence was dependent on their focus. You know, rather than having their focus on themselves, rather than their focus being on everyone else that was bowing down, rather than their focus being on the furnace or this king who's angry at them, where was their focus? Their focus was on God. This is what they said. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from it. He will deliver us from your majesty's hand. I want to encourage you, friends and family, this morning that we have an almighty and powerful God. You know, with everything that is happening in our country today and in the world, it's so easy for our focus to shift onto the bad news that we're hearing, onto social media, onto, you know, listening out for the rise of the coronavirus cases. It's so easy for our focus to shift. But I want to challenge you, friends and family, to shift your focus to God. Spend some time in reflection, pondering on the goodness, the faithfulness, the mercy, and the love of our God. And as we do that, we'll see how much our confidence, our faith, will begin to grow. Firstly, their confidence was dependent on their focus. But secondly, their confidence did not depend on the outcome. Remember what they said in verse 18? Even if... He doesn't. Even if he doesn't, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Do you know what kind of confidence they had? They had an even if kind of confidence that said, you know what? Our God can save us. Our God will save us. But even if he doesn't, we are still not going to bow down. Their confidence didn't depend on the outcome. How many of us can say the same today? You know, it's so easy in our situation to say, just have faith. Or to say, if you have faith, God will protect you from coronavirus. But true confidence, true faith, as seen in this story, goes beyond the outcome of the situation and says, you know what? No matter what happens, I will choose to remain confident in God. Family, Over the next couple of weeks, if we don't see the help that we wanted, if we do end up losing our jobs, if a family member or a friend were to die in a week's time because of coronavirus, will we be able to remain confident in who God is despite the outcome? That's the kind of faith, that's the kind of confidence that we are challenged to have today, family, even if confidence. You know, the story continues further. And these three young men end up being thrown into the fiery furnace. And what's crazy is this furnace is so hot that the guy who threw them in died because of the intense heat. And so everyone is watching the guards and the king. They're all looking inside. And one of the guards kind of notices that there aren't just three guys, but there are four men. And they're walking around in the furnace unbound and unharmed. See, it is in the furnace, it's in the fire that these three young men discovered that there's someone else who stands in the fire with them. I want to encourage you with this final thought. Our confidence grows in the fire because it's in the fire that we find God's presence. You know, as a community, as a nation, as a family, 
we're standing in a frightening, scary, crazy situation. You know, it feels like we're standing in a blazing furnace. It feels like everything is hopeless. It feels like everything is too scary, too uncertain. But confidence isn't based on feeling. Confidence comes firstly when our focus shifts to God. Secondly, confidence comes when we decide to have faith, to trust in God, even if the outcome isn't what we want. And thirdly, confidence comes when we know and believe that we have a God who is with us in the fire. Here's a final verse to wrap up our talk this morning. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. And this is what it says. In all this, you greatly rejoice. Sounds a bit weird. In all this, greatly rejoice. But here's what he goes on to say. Though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. My prayer for us, friends and family around New Zealand and abroad, is that in this situation, may our confidence grow. May our faith in God grow because we know that he is with us in the fire. Whatever your reaction, whatever your response is to COVID-19 and the lockdown, my prayer is that you will not rely on your feelings, but that you would rely on your confidence, on your faith in knowing that God is with us. God bless you, friends and family. We're thinking of you. We're praying for you. We believe in you. We love you. As we end our program today, our worship team is going to uh, help us respond through worship. And uh, the song that we're going to be hearing today is, is called Surrounded. And I love the words of the song because it reminds us of this amazing truth that we have a God who surrounds us when we're going through hardship, when we're going through trial. We have a God who surrounds us. He is for us and he is with us. So may you respond, may you engage, may you know that you have a God who surrounds you. God bless.
Thank you so much again for joining us here at Papsta at your place today. We have loved having you here and we hope you've been blessed. We want you to stay up to date and connected in with us throughout the week. So please make sure you're following us on everything social, on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Um, and you can also sign up for our e-update, which is an email that goes out every week uh, where all the information will be that you need to know. So um, head to our website to sign up for that. But um, other than that, have a great rest of your week, guys. Stay safe, be kind, kia kaha, and we'll see you again next time for Papsu at Your Place. Thank you.